It's so good to see all of you with us this morning here at Westside. If you're a guest today, once again, please accept our welcome. We're so glad that you've joined us as we've come together to worship God. We hope to have the opportunity to get to know you and to extend a warm hand of friendship and welcome to you today. I want to well, uh, wish, as uh, was mentioned in the prayer a moment ago, we have two couples celebrating some very important milestones in their life. Uh, Johnny and Patty Ferguson are celebrating their 51st wedding anniversary today, and Rudy and Nita Pierce will be celebrating their 70th wedding, excuse me, wedding anniversary on Tuesday. So congratulations to these two couples. This morning is Promotion Sunday, and uh, in just a few minutes, Casey McDonald is going to be coming before you as soon as we have, after we have sung the invitation song this morning, Casey's going to be coming and presenting to you all of our children so that our elders might pray in their behalf as they begin a new year uh, academically in a new year in our Bible class program here at Westside. Now to necessitate that, I'm going to do something this morning over which I believe there will be universal agreement. I'm going to preach a short sermon. <laughs> I've never had anybody stand up and object to that ever. So I do promise it is going to be a little bit briefer than normal this morning. In fact, what I've actually done today, if you have a copy of the sermon notes, I'm going to do a part of it this morning, and then I'm going to do the rest of it at our evening service at 5 o'clock. So I'm actually dividing it into two parts. As I have been investigating God throughout these summer months, one of the things that comes over to me again and again is the fact that God is the God who hears. And if there has ever been a time when we have needed God to hear us, I believe it's now. The shootings yesterday in El Paso, more gun violence last night in Ohio, this past week in our former home of South Haven, Mississippi, all remind us of the cruelty and the evil that exists in the world. And if there's ever been a time in which believers have needed to petition God and go before him in prayer, this certainly is that time. Have you ever heard anybody say, and you help me out with this statement, don't call us. Let's say it one more time. Don't call us. All right. What, what is that person saying? If maybe you were applying for a job, or maybe you were calling customer service at AT&T, or whatever it may have been, the message is unmistakable, isn't it? We really aren't interested in hearing from you. But if we need to get in touch with you, we'll, we'll give you a call. I want you to know this morning, that is not the case with the God of Scripture. The God of the Bible, in a clear crystal communique, says that his child will never receive a busy signal. His child will never be transferred to voicemail. His child will never be put on hold. God never says, don't call me, I'll call you. We serve the God who hears. The message of Scripture really is threefold. First of all, Scripture tells us that our God is approachable. Over in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verses 15 and 16, the writer of that book says that we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our infirmities, but one who has been tempted in all points as we are and yet is without sin. Now notice what he says in verse 16. Therefore, 
Because of this fact, let us come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain help and mercy in our time of need. You know, some monarchs are very difficult to approach. Back in the Old Testament book of Esther, we read about this young Jewish girl who, through God's providence, became the queen of Persia to King Ahasuerus. Now, a plot had arisen within the kingdom to annihilate all of the Jews. Ahasuerus wasn't even aware that Esther was a Jew. And so Esther's cousin Mordecai sent word to her that she must go before King Ahasuerus to tell him about this wicked plan. The problem was, in Persia, in order for you to have an audience with the king, you had to be invited, even if you were the queen. And Esther realized that by going to the king, the king unannounced, approaching the king without being invited, she was risking her very life. And ultimately, she said, if I perish, I perish. And she went and she told the king ultimately what, what uh, was going on. But we don't have a king like that with God. Because of what Christ has done for us as our high priest, you and I have a hotline with God. He is approachable for us. Not only that, he is accessible to us as well. Look, if you will, at Romans chapter 8, verse 15. There Paul says, we have not received the spirit of, of uh, slavery leading to fear again, but we have received the spirit of adoption as sons, whereby we cry, Abba. Abba, Father. The word Abba is an Aramaic term that is an intimate relationship. People call me many different things, some of which I won't mention this morning. But I have people that call me Mr. Reeves. I remember first time someone called me that. I thought that was so strange for someone to call me Mr. Reeves. But now... You know, people call me Mr. Reeves. Or sometimes at church, there's still some folks that call me Brother Reeves. Most folks just call me Steve, and that's quite all right. I was preaching in Newport many years ago, and there was a man in that community who always called me Reverend. I pulled him aside one day. He was a man in about his 80s, maybe even 90. And I said, Mr. Junkin, I just want you to know that you don't need to call me reverend. I said, that word reverend is only found one time in the Bible, and it's used in reference to God and not man. And you don't need to call me reverend. He said, that's good to know. Thank you, reverend. <laughs> I thought, okay, I'm not going anywhere with this one. But let me tell you, as, as many things as people may call me, and even my grandchildren, my grandchildren call me Gampy, not Grumpy, but Gampy. But there are only four people in this world who call me Daddy. Just four. My four children, three daughters and one son. They are the only ones who call me Daddy. And here God says that since we as Christians have been given the spirit of adoption, we have been adopted into the family of God. We have the royal privilege of calling God Abba, Father. He is accessible to us. And third, Scripture says that God is agreeable. God is not against you. God is not trying to thwart your life. God actually longs to answer our prayers and to give us good things. Jesus alluded to this fact in the Sermon on the Mount, 
Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11, and also Luke's account is found in Luke chapter 11, verses 4 and following. Look at what Jesus said. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it shall be opened. For what man among you, if his son asks for bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will he give him a snake? If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask of him? You see, God is agreeable. God longs to bless us. He longs to answer our prayers. I want to share with you briefly just five scriptures that talk about God's willingness to hear us. Psalm 65, verse 2. Oh, you who hear prayer, all men come or cry out to you. Psalm 116, verse 1. I love the Lord, for he has heard my voice and my supplication. Proverbs 15, verse 29. Listen to this one. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he answers the prayers of the righteous. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Call upon me and I will hear. I will show you great and marvelous things. And then finally, 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. John says, this is the confidence we have of him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And we know that if he hears whatever we ask of him, we shall receive what we have asked of him. Now, you might say, well, preacher, does that mean that God always answers our prayers in exactly the way that we ask? I have to tell you that there have been a number of times in my life when God did not answer my prayers as I anticipated he would. However, I can also tell you with complete assurance this morning that given the broader perspective of time, I cannot recall a single thing I have ever asked for but what God did not provide an answer that was just as good, if not better. Given the broader perspective of time in my life. This evening we're going to talk about how God answers, how God hears in times of hardship. How God hears in times of heartache how he hears in times of hostility, how he hears in times of heartbreak, and how he hears in times of happiness. My father died of cancer in 1985. And just a few weeks before he passed away, he received a letter from my Aunt Helen, who lived in Nashville, among other things, in that letter, she quoted a, a, a poem. And I remember that poem. I know not by what methods rare, but this I know, God answers prayer. I know that he teaches us, uh, I, I know that fervent prayer is heard, it says. I know not if the blessing sought will come in just the way I thought. I know it comes soon or late, therefore I must pray and wait. This morning, I'd like for us to take just a few moments and go before the God who hears. 
Will you pray with me, please? Almighty God, today we come before you thankful that you hear your children. Thankful that we can approach your throne with boldness because of the sacrifice of Jesus. Thankful, Heavenly Father, that you know our hearts, you know our thoughts, and our intentions. Even when we are unable to express them in human language. We are thankful for your Holy Spirit who intercedes in prayer with groanings that we are unable to understand. We live in a world that is hurting. And this morning we live in a nation that is hurting in many ways. The shootings... The violence, the evil that has permeated our land is almost beyond our thought and our imagination. And we cry out to you, O God, for deliverance. We pray our hope would be that the people of our nation might turn to you But in order for that to happen, we realize that we ourselves must point others in that direction through the lives that we live and the testimony of word and deed. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will help the West Side Church of Christ to be a light shining in the midst of the darkness. To be salt in the midst of a corrupt world. And we pray, Father, that you will hear. And thank you for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. My dear friends, this morning, maybe you're here and you're thinking, well, I'm not a Christian. May I urge you today, to become a child of God through confessing your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Turning away from sin in your life, he'll help you to do that. And by being baptized into Christ and raised up to walk in newness of life. And maybe as a Christian, you've gotten off track in your life and you feel as if your prayers are no longer heard by God I want you to know that God is always willing for you to come back to him. God has always got his ear open to hear those words, Father, I'm coming home. If we can help you today, will you come while we stand and while we sing?